Hello everybody, my name is Young Lacobius, and before I tell you what I'm going to talk about, if you are offended by religious conversation, I believe you shouldn't watch this. Today I'm going to talk about why God feels what he feels for you, and how he feels. Why and how he loves you, basically. God loves you in two ways. One, the way of creation of a project, if you will. Two, he just loves you as in he absolutely adores you to the end of the universe. Here's how he adores you like a project. As I'm sure you guys know, God has an infinite amount of power. He is all powerful. Seriously, there is no limit to his power. None in the slightest. I know as much and you know as much, but most importantly, he knows as much. And since he has this unimaginable amount of power, this is the reason why he can't do much. My reasoning to this is because since he has so much power, if he were just to be like, BAM! Something amazing! Then it would result in complete catastrophe. I mean, Seriously, it's like taking a sledgehammer to an ice sculpture. And of course, since this is always a very delicate process in the sort of, um, cycle of creation, if you will, he does very tiny, tiny, tiny little things. Here's an example. Has anyone ever heard of the Big Bang? It's, it's supposed to be like what many people believe to be, like, the creation of reality. Many people think that God was like, CHABLUI! And then, explosions everywhere, the universe just spouted out and stars were flying every- no. Now, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys if you believe that, but that isn't what happened, because as I said, God cannot do that. Because if he were to, then it would just it would result in complete and utter catastrophe. So, at the beginning of creation, what he did is he just did something really, 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 really tiny little minuscule thingy. And this tiny minuscule thing just... it somehow reacted. Okay, he, let me let me explain it in a clearer way. A chemical in the middle of space all right, this chemical went like with other chemicals, like and then we have this sort of like chemicals floating around each other, and then it sort of builds a small gravitational pull, then other chemicals come up, and a bigger gravitational pull, and more chemicals come up until millennia later we form a sun. Now, this sun, like the gravitational pull that created it, from the chemicals, of course, it has a gravitational pull of its own, but a m much, much stronger one than just a few chemicals. As a result, it's pulling everything, like lots and lots and lots and lots of things, like rocks, for, well, basically, yeah, rocks from other broken planets and such like, they just come to the sun, they just orbit it, orbit the sun, and eventually they get closer and closer to the sun, in which case they begin to melt and then fuse together to form a planet. Long story short, process repeats, and then we have ourselves Earth. Then we have, like, the chemicals from the sun, which plaster themselves onto our planet, but right now, our planet is still just a rock with some chemicals. As millennia pass, eventually our planet develops life due to these chemicals and the proper distance away from the sun, so that way it can maintain life, if you will. So yeah, it's really sciency and stuff. It takes like, I don't know, it's, it's a really complicated process. So yeah, he loves us in that sense as a project. 
Now here's why he absolutely adores us to the end of the universe, and more than just a simple creation. As I'm sure you all know, God is all-knowing. He is omniscient. He, can, he knows the past, the present, and the future. Quite obvious. Since this is the case, it should be quite obvious that he knew that you would be born before your birth, or before the beginning of the creation of mankind. But you have to remember how much he loves you, even before your birth. Alright, let me explain it to you like this. Okay, I am currently in a long-distance relationship with my girlfriend who lives in France. I, I, I won't be able to see her for a, a long time, one year, one freaking year. Still though, I love her to the end of the universe, and when I finally get to see her, I will be crying tears of joy. Tears of joy everywhere, just streaming down my face. Now, take that happiness, that sense of adoration upon meeting a lover from a long distance, and multiply that by literally millions. Now. God loves you to the end of the earth simply because he waited. He waited for you. He loves you so much. He was willing to wait millions of years just for you guys. You have no idea how much he loves you. Now here's something that's a bit saddening, so brace yourselves. During these millions of years in which he waited, God was emotionally preparing himself for the future he knew was going to come. In the future, he saw that there would be happiness. So much happiness. Happiness everywhere. For example, there is a new child born. He gets to, you know, meet someone else, someone new. For another example, someone returns his affection. In other words, people get right with God. In which case, he would, I, I know, he would be happier for the excelled amount of returned affection. I mean, just, there are all kinds of examples in which he's happy. However, there are also a decent amount of emotions or times in which he's rather saddened. This is because, well, as I've said, God has waited millions upon millions of years just to see you. And if you just ignore him, and just walk away from him, just completely desert him, and just say, screw you, and just move on with your life, it'll just rip him apart. Will he stop loving you? No. No, he won't stop loving you. His love for you is unconditional, but because of his love for you, he is bound to respect your decisions. With my relationship with Valentine, for example, I... I love her to the end of the universe, but, I mean, I, I respect her decisions and whatever she does. I, I can't force anything upon her. I cannot force her to love me or to force myself to love her. It, it comes naturally. We naturally love each other. God loves you to that same extent, except times of millions, because, well, he, he really, even more so, can't bring himself to force anything at all upon you. So, you're really entitled to your own actions. No matter how drastic they can be. Let's say someone is abusing drugs. Person develops an addiction, can't stop, and ends up in the hospital bed, of course. His family. His family did not know that he was abusing these drugs, and so they feel absolutely worried to absolutely no end. So, they pray for him, naturally. But, for some reason, the person who is abusing drugs still dies. Why did he die? Is it because God didn't love that person? Quite the opposite. It's because he loved him so much. He respected his decision and, well, he let him go down his own path. He didn't want to force anything upon him, so the person who was doing drugs went down his path and faced the end result, which was his end. But imagine how God must have felt not being able to answer those prayers, because 
as I said, he loves everyone equally, and the amount of love to each individual is just... It, it surpasses everything, everything else in existence, everything you could possibly imagine. He would have wanted to answer that prayer, he would have wanted to save that person's life, to help him, but unfortunately he, well, he's bound by other people's actions, their choices, their decisions. He simply shakes his head and, well, I believe he would cry if he were un emotionally unprepared and he would simply say, I'm sorry, I tried. There are some cases in which we simply don't know what we're doing with our lives, and that's when he first started doing the drugs, in which case it would lead to the addiction, which would lead to his death. And of course, God, he would be there from before the drug incident happened, and well, say just as it was about to happen, I'm pretty sure God was there with him and said, no, I, I don't think you should do this. He's got conscience, if you will, but that person did it anyways, and well, as I've said, God can't force anything upon you, he can't force his love upon you, so he just accepts your decision, which is very drastic in this case. So that amount of sorrow is just unbearable, it's overwhelming, hence why it took millennia of psychological and emotional training, because he knew that this was going to happen. Another time the psychological and emotional training comes into, uh, into play is when, well, okay, take that negative emotion, okay, yeah, it's horrible. The guilt, the helplessness, the sorrow of losing a child, it's horrible, but then look at it like this. At the same time, there's also millions of other people who are dying and are in almost that identical situation. However, there are also millions of people who are doing the right thing, who are being very happy with their lives. So he has all of these feelings, all of these positive and negative emotions just jumbled up together, and I don't know how he does what he does. I don't know how he can stay calm through all of this. It must have taken millions of years to just retain his sanity upon that point. I mean, good lord. So yes, he's done a lot for the future and for what was going to come, but most of all he waited for you, and he loves you all the same. He put himself through this because he felt as if you're worth it, and you are. You can be anyways, it's whether you choose to be or not, but either way, whether you choose to do the right or the wrong thing, just know that God will love you unconditionally. Well, I'm afraid I've spent way too much time on this video, so I will see you in the next film that I happen to think of making. Goodbye!